Behold, the EMAC. In all its stylistic glory. With two high-powered speakers and a front-mounted optical drive. To one of the most stylish keyboards in the industry. The very last single button mouse ever made by Apple. The very last CRT based machine ever made or released by Apple. Three USB ports, two Firewire 400 ports, a modem, and an Ethernet jack in addition to a video out port. All on one panel. The eMac. One of the least appreciated products in the Apple product line. The EMAC stands as a reminder of the past. It was released in an age where LCD display technology was the way to go, but not quite affordable yet. Apple needed a machine to basically fill in the gap between the iMac and the Power Mac. And they wanted something that could be purchased affordably by educational institutions, teachers, and budget-minded consumers. The eMac was released as an affordable alternative to the new LCD iMac. The CRT-based 14-inch iMac was well beyond its prime. So Apple created this machine kind of as a stopgap measure until LCD technology became affordable enough to be purchased by schools and budget-minded consumers who were either entry-level Apple users or just run-of-the-mill computer users. Borrowing heavily from the new Snow White iMac, well, not new anymore, but then relatively new, and the design language of the LCD iMac, which was the Luxo lamp model, the eMac features some pretty cool styling cues. It's one of my personal favorites, to be honest with you. It uses a translucent plastic that was painted on the reverse side, or actually in, in some cases molded with a, an opaque white plastic panel to create an effect of almost like a heavy coating of shellac. What you get is sort of a 3D effect if you look at it at the right angle. The plastic has great depth to it and superior gloss. And if it's ever scratched, it can be polished smooth again. The effect can be noticed more notably on the eMac logo itself. As you can clearly see, it's printed on the face of the translucent part. And you can see the eMac logo reflect against the, the white background. That isn't true for the main covering of the machine or the rear panel which is molded from an opaque white plastic. But the level of detail in manufacturing can be noted in these hex head screws. These actually have machined a machined finish that gives you nice, a nice um, concentric ring effect when the light hits it. They're absolutely beautiful screws and uh, really add to its appearance. Now that's pretty creepy, just to have that in the background of the shot, but hey, you know, whatever, right? Anyway, because this is one of the very last of the CRT machines, in fact, it is the last CRT machine for Apple, um, <clears throat> they used some pretty high-quality flat-faced tubes on these machines. These weren't Sony tubes, these were, um, I believe they were Korean and uh, they took advantage of the then popular uh, flat tube technology which is really nothing um, to write home about. Basically they, cr they used the same type of, of uh, vacuum tube but they molded the front panel um, so that it had a flat face but it still has a concave inner surface and they did that because the tube itself is under vacuum and if it was a completely flat face, it would be prone to implosions. 
by having a concave and inner surface, it actually helps distribute the force evenly. And of course you have an implosion band around the perimeter of that, which gives you superior implosion prevention protection. The optical drive is conveniently located behind this flip-down panel, which in Apple's infinite awesomeness, they went ahead and molded this panel the same way they molded the front bezel. And here you can see exactly how that works. What they've essentially done is bonded a transparent acrylic panel onto a, um, an opaque plastic framework or a back plate and that gives you the depth appearance. And what's even cooler is this awesome chrome, made out of metal in fact, Apple logo. Its mirror finish is unparalleled. Of course this one's not really polished, but you get the idea. What I like about the eMac, it's one of the few machines that Apple has ever made that has placed the serial number, Ethernet address, and, I'm sorry, Ethernet, a MAC address, and the system specs conveniently behind this flip-down door. On all other Maple products, did I just say Maple? I did. But on all other Apple products, um, that is in a very hard-to-see location. So um, on the portable machines, you have to remove the batteries to see that information, or if you couldn't pull it up from the system profiler, or on an iMac, you'd have to flip the machine upside down. But because this machine weighs something like 50 pounds, all thanks to its CRT display, uh, with its massively heavy flat face, look at how thick that glass is. Look at that. <laughs> is that thick or what? Um, that does add considerable half to the machine. Um, but hell, for the, I think it was a, fourteen or fifteen hundred dollar machine which was incredibly cheap at the time you did get quite a bit you got an optional airport express card you got an optical drive that could read and write DVDs and CDs which at the time in 2004 was a pretty nice feature to have you also got a 40 gigabyte hard drive which at the time was fairly decent you got um, 256 megs of RAM upgradable to one gigabyte you also got a relatively sharp, high-resolution CRT display, which, as I mentioned earlier, was more of a, a hindrance than a, than, a, uh, than a selling point. But it was still high-resolution, and it still had awesome picture quality when it was new. You also got this advanced keyboard. Now, this is a frameless keyboard that harkens back to the Apple um, Snow White design theme, or design language, as it is completely frameless and you got this super cool single button mouse which is um, probably one of the most stylish mouses I've ever seen um, but in typical Apple form over function this um, it is a single button mouse so you have to control click everything if you want to right click but you could plug in any two button mouse and still have that function and as I mentioned these speakers are superior to most speakers and most all-in-one machines, especially at the time. Um, they sound brilliant, uh, to be honest with you. Um, probably one of the best sounding speakers I've ever seen on an all-in-one. The grills were removable. Um, they're a little difficult to get out sometimes, but they can be taken out if you like that grillless appearance. If you want to see that nice uh, shiny white speaker cone, you can do so. If there's one thing I can say that I don't like about this machine, it is the USB 1.1 ports. It has three of them, and all three suck. I'm trying to transfer my entire iTunes library to this machine with an external hard drive. It is taking approximately seven hours to transfer about 20 gigabytes of data. I started this probably oh, a little over an hour ago, and this is all I've gotten so far. Um, if I had an external FireWire drive, I would use it. I don't have one. Um, I tried transferring it over the network, but my wireless router kept kicking it out. Um, not entirely sure why, but 
almost near completion every time it would stop. Yeah. And there she is right there. In fact, that router has been acting up lately. I'm going to have to replace it soon. Um, it has been behaving very badly. The, the eMac is still a fairly decent machine, even in today's day and age. Um, it can only run up to 10.5, and because it's a power PC, most web plugins and downloads um, are no longer able to support the power PC platform. Um, but it's still a very cool machine, nevertheless. Um, as far as performance goes, when you max it out to a one full gig of RAM and maybe toss a nice 500 gig drive in there, you've got quite a little powerhouse um, that can be purchased for about a hundred bucks. I see these machines refurbished online for about a hundred dollars. Um, of course, refurbished doesn't always mean perfect condition either. Um, one of the things that I would watch out for when buying one of these is um, they were built in the depth of the capacitor failure era. This machine had shown zero trouble. Um, this machine was fully functional when I got it for free. And um, I got it from its original owner. She took very good care of it, which is why it has no scratches or any signs of wear anywhere on it. Um, but I was taking it apart to do some minor upgrades. If you saw my previous video, you know what I'm talking about. I discovered that the down converter board, which basically runs off of the uh, main power supply and supplies DC voltage to the logic board, all of the capacitors were exploding, um, even though the machine was fully functional otherwise. So that was, uh, that was bizarre. Um, I went ahead and replaced the whole board. I didn't have all the cap capacitors that I needed, and I didn't want to go buying them but one by one. So. Uh, for twenty dollars, I was able to fix the machine, and uh, now has a a good down converter board. And um, I'm finding that parts for the eMac are insanely hard to find. Um, it seems like people are just throwing them out instead of parting them out, and Apple no longer stocks parts for these. So if you need some of the commonly uh, replaced parts, such as the power button, um, which people usually break the first time they take them apart because they don't realize how short the cable is that goes to it, <laughs> and then they break it apart from behind. You can't get that anymore. Um, the power button actually is right in this inaccessible location on the side here. This one actually has a crack down the middle of it. Um, it's too bad because I used to buy these things all the time you know, replacement power buttons because we break them at work constantly. Um, the kids would hit them too hard and they'd break and fall apart, you know. So I used to buy them, like, by the bag full and I don't have any left. Oh well. So, any other words of wisdom for the eMac? No, really, I don't. It does have a built-in microphone and that's right here. Really, the only thing about the eMac that I like is its design. I think it is a tremendously stylish machine even on the inside. Um, and if you watch my previous eMac video, you'll know what I mean. It's beautiful. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, nice, tightly machined and stamped, you know, steel panels and, um, you know, just really, really nice to look at inside. I wish they had made a clear cover for it because that would be even cooler. Um, but, I mean, of course, all that shielding is really just for uh, RF um, and EMI restrictions. So, how does she perform on the web? Let's take a look. We'll launch Safari. I know you're all wondering how she runs and how fast and uh, amazing. Oh god, that flicker is so bad. <laughs> I can't change the refresh rate on the um, on the internal display. So I'm stuck with what I have, and I'd already turned off stabilization on my camera, which does make a difference. Um, let's go ahead and go to YouTube. Now, right now, we're connected wirelessly, and we're transferring data from an external hard drive. That's not too bad, actually. That's, that's not too bad at all. Let's try, um, let's go to Yahoo. See, 
As far as a web machine, this is pretty decent. Sadly, the latest browser you can run on this is Safari. Let's see what version we're running here. Safari 506. I do believe that Mozilla, I think it's version 4, runs. Let's take a look. I'm going to download it and see what I can get. Sorry for the flicker again. Um, I'm downloading 10.4 Fox version 9 uh, for the PowerPC G4e. Um, that seems to be the latest browser available uh, for the classic Mac. I should also mention that the, um, the 1 GHz model, which is what this is, that was released in 2004, has the ability to run OS 9, which is really cool. Um, this is the last Mac to that yeah, this is the last Macintosh that will run OS 9, and I believe it's 9.2.2 that it'll run. Um, so if you're looking at a machine that's fairly new to run old Mac classic stuff, this is the one to get. Um, and let me just pull up the system profiler so that you can see which version it is. Um, this is the eMac or Power Mac 4-4, that's what the model is, the internal model identifier. Um, so there you go. Um, so if you're looking for a, a nice modern 922, I know that sounds crazy, but uh, machine, this is what you want to get. Um, so we're going to download 10.4 Fox and see how she runs. So let's see what happens. Now, the version of um, of Safari that Apple supports, the last version, as I think I mentioned earlier, is version 506, which is um, already a little bit outdated. Unfortunately, you can no longer get Flash Player to run on this machine. Um, so any Flash sites will have a hard time running. Um, Oh, isn't that cute? Look at that logo they got there with the... Yeah, <laughs> nice. All right, so let's go ahead and install that. It's really sad that the Apple community, um, more specifically the, um, the companies supporting Apple products such as Adobe, Mozilla, etc., etc., um, have decided that the PowerPC must die. Well... The sad part is, a lot of the power PCs are in fact dead, especially the newer ones, the G5s, the G4s. They've died mainly due to manufacturing defects um, or design flaws. So this is 10.4 Fox. That's nice. We're one year old. Oh, nice. Let's see how YouTube looks on 10.4 Fox. Hmm, not too bad. It works. So there you go. So this is a modified version of um, Firefox. Uh, I believe it's Firefox 4 or Firefox 5 um, that was modified to run on the PowerPC. Pretty cool. So where what was I saying? Um, so yeah, most of the G4s were affected by the capacitor problem and many of them have died as a result of such and uh, their owners aren't paying to fix them. And the G5s have, well, most of the G5s have died either due to um, the uh, ball grid array issue that killed off my G5 server or tower. Um, that killed off a lot of those. The higher end G5s, the quad cores and such, were killed off due to faulty cooling systems leaking coolant and destroying the systems. Unlike the earlier Macs, um, up until like the G3s, um, which will live forever, uh, the newer PowerPC models um, unfortunately won't live as long, so that reduces the demand 
greatly reduces the demand for new software, browsers, etc. Which is kind of sad when you think about it, uh, because those quad-core G5s were screaming machines. I mean, even that dual mach that dual processor one that I had was a very nice system that died as a result of a design flaw. So, sadly, there will be a lack of um, of power PC G4s and G5s uh, for future generations, and these Emacs. Um, they suffered from the capacitor issues. The iMac suffered capacitor issues, the iMac G5s, and uh, the, the G5 flat panel that was that replaced the Luxo lamp. The Luxo lamp iMacs had power supply problems. So you see where I'm going with this. A lot of those power PCs, um, if it weren't for design flaws, manufacturing defects, and other issues, they would probably live quite a a long life but uh, because they were built so poorly um, and the portables oh my god don't get me started on those uh, the iBooks the um, the iBooks suffered a lot of issues the, the G4 iBooks the power books were garbage um, from, at least from my experience so um, any Mac made from like 2000 to or 2002 until like you know 2006 you know they won't live very long um, or much longer if they're still alive so there you go this is the eMac in all its glory it is now repaired and running and um, I'm using this as a dedicated Sims machine pretty much and uh, that's pretty much all I plan on using it for um, and I have my iTunes library on this and I actually figured out how to share my library from my MacBook um, so I don't even have to copy it over but I want it over here anyway um, but I can share my entire library over the network which is kinda cool that's a feature that Apple finally did allowed uh, uh, you know but there you go this is a cool browser um, I like the logo, it looks like a a fox howling behind the world or something like that there you go, look at that, look at that, there's a nice shot of it right there anyway, because foxes do that, you know uh, so let's see, let's see the Apple site, oh this is such terrible flicker I'm so sorry um, Apple site seems to work okay this is a nice little system. I'm impressed. Um, only it's taking a bit to load. Yeah, it loaded. One thing I didn't do was I didn't try to watch a YouTube video. I didn't think it would work, so I didn't try. So let's try it. Let's just see what happens. Let's try um, this one here. Let's see what it does to us. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, that's unfortunately Adobe Flash Player is what killed that off. Oh well. Good night.